So Pokemon is a pretty opinionated series. Everyone's got their favorite Pokemon, their favorite gym leader, their favorite generation, yada yada yada. To me, that's a lot of yapping, and it's not what you're here for, probably. But to be fair, if I'm going to be talking about Pokemon on this channel, which I will be, you might want to know more about my opinions on the series so you know where I'm coming from. But I didn't just want to do a self-indulgent video about like, these are my favorite Pokemon and I love Emerald and stuff like that. So I thought the best thing to do would be to make this video, a video where I objectively figure out the subjective question, what are the best and worst Pokemon of each generation? And when I say best, I don't mean favorite, I mean best. So what does that mean? Essentially, I'm taking into account everything about each Pokemon. Sure, a big chunk of which Pokemon is going to be the best comes down to its design, but I'm only going to give it that title if it's also a good Pokemon statistically. I'll also take into account the generation and context it's in. A fire type in Gen 5 is going to get a lot more praise for how few there are. Likewise, a water type in Gen 3 isn't going to be as emphasized. And then as far as worse goes, it's the same story. Is there a really cool and awesomely designed Pokemon with terrible stats? That's a candidate for the worst one. Is it just an abomination to mankind? It's also on the list. I'm going to try to avoid talking about legendaries, pseudo legendaries, and starters, because that kind of feels like cheating. Obviously, some of the legendaries are going to be the best and the starters as well. So to make it more interesting, I want to talk about the other Pokemon in the generation. As we go, I'll talk about the runner-ups and even mention which one is my favorite in the generation. So that way you can get to know me and my taste of Pokemon a little bit more before we start really getting into these videos. Also, because this is going to be very long if I do every generation in this video, we're going to have today's video just focus on the 2D games of the franchise, so generations 1 through 5. And then next week we'll do generation 6 through 9 to cap off the 3D games. So without any further ado, the best and worst Pokemon of each 2D generation, starting with the favorite generation of everyone over 30 years old, generation 1. Gen 1 is an interesting bunch, because it's one of the largest generations of Pokemon we've ever got, and because of that there's a lot of really heavy hitters in here, and likewise there's a lot of stinkers. I never understood why people think Pokemon are going downhill in designs when Generation 1, the game that started it all, had things like Seal, the Seal Pokemon, and one of the contenders for worst of the generation, Muck. The but don't get me wrong, there's a lot of really great Pokemon in this generation. Gengar, Cloyster, Ninetales, even some of the starters like Venusaur and Charizard are really up there. All of their designs are super solid and they've got stats to back it up. But even though Ninetales is my personal favorite, I don't think it's the best of the generation. It's beautiful, it's elegant, and even the Alolan form maintains that mystique while being a very strong Pokemon. But Arcanine does that and it's also cool. It threads that perfect mascot line of being cool, cute, and strong. It's got something for everybody. As far as what the worst Pokemon of the generation is, I have to give it to Onix. I love Onix's design. I think he looks dope, and Steelix gave Onix what it needed, but I have to award it worst Pokemon out of generation 1 because of the fact that it's the biggest catfish I've ever seen. It is a 30 foot long rock snake, the main boss of the first gym, and Brock's signature Pokemon, and it has less attack than Oddish. Like sure, it's got decent defense, but it has no attack and no speed. It is a useless Pokemon that can only work well with body press, a move that wasn't even introduced until Sword and Shield, so it wins worst Pokemon for me. Gen 2 is a weird one because there's not as many additions here, but there is still plenty of options to pick from. Crobat gets a shout out for taking one of possibly the most hated Pokemon in existence and giving it a really dope evolution that's very useful. We then get some sick fire dogs in Houndoom and Entei. I know Entei is a legendary, but the movie about Entei was so good that it still gets a shout out. We even get some of the dopiest looking Pokemon in the entire game. One of them, Dunsparce, is my favorite. I just love this silly little guy. He's not all that great, but he's niche enough that you can use him, and I appreciate him. But I do think, hands down, the best Pokemon of this generation has to go to Donphan. It's a really well-rounded Pokemon with surprisingly good stats, and had a really fun design in an elephant that can form into this, like, tire thing that rolls forward and attacks, perfectly matching with Rollout, one of its best moves. Unfortunately for this generation, it also had a lot of candidates for the worst Pokemon. Things like Ladian or Smeargle especially hurt, because 
their really cool designs and fun concepts on weak Pokemon. Especially Smeargle, who has an amazing concept but no stats to back it up. Hitmontop is also on this list, because as much as I love this design and his little dance and I wish I could use him, he's a fighting type with middling stats. The whole point is that his attack and defense are kind of average. Before the switch to 3D, I think I probably would have gone with Ledian for this generation. But there's one Pokemon in particular in Gen 2 that even though its stats are great, when we switched to 3D, it was done especially dirty. And that's Miltank. Don't get me wrong, I love the 2D art and sprite work for Miltank. It's a fun Pokemon, and I love cows. But when they switched to 3Ds, they... I don't... I don't want to... They gave Miltank nipples jiggle physics. This is disgusting and I hate looking at it now. Because of how dirty they did my guy Miltank, we are going to have to award it the worst Pokemon of Generation 2. Generation 3 is a hard one for me, because it is my personal favorite, I think. It's either that or Gen 6, but there's a lot of really solid Pokemon here. Mudkip for the sheer meme power alone, but you have things like Slacking, Shedinja, Gardevoir, Sharpedo, all incredibly strong and interesting Pokemon with brilliant designs. Three of my favorite Pokemon of all time are in this generation. Absol, because it's beautiful, strong, and has a high crit rate, so it's fun to use. Metagross is my favorite pseudo-legendary, because look at him, and Ludicolo colo because <laughs> it's just such a good generation but i think one pokemon rises above and it's technically not a pseudo legendary but it is a dragon type, so it feels like it. That would be Flygon, a ground dragon type, which alone is great typing, giving us stab moves like Earthquake, but with amazing stats and really cute design. A design so good that when Ken Sugimori was designing the mega evolutions for Pokemon, he couldn't get one for Flygon. He just had artist block, so it never got a mega evolution. And personally, I think it's because you can't improve this design. But honestly, as cool as that would have been, I don't think it needed one. It's already such a good Pokemon. But as much as I love this generation, it's not without its misses. And that's mainly again because of really cool and dope designs and concepts without any stats to back it up, so they just hurt to use. We have things like Sableye, Mawile, Medicham, amazing designs and interesting concepts with no great stats to use them with. I've always wanted to have a Mawile team, but until Mega Evolution, it was just not a feasible Pokemon to have on my party. But when I think of the worst Pokemon of this generation, it has to go with a Pokemon with actually decent stats, but so forgettable that I never hear anybody talk about it. Actually, two Pokemon, because this is a tie. Have you ever met someone who, when asked what their favorite Pokemon is, they respond with Huntail or Gorbis? It is an interesting concept to have a clam evolve into one of two different eels based on what you give it. And they are decent Pokemon, but there's a combination of issues here. One, you can only catch this Pokemon so late into the game that most people are already set in their team. And two, it's not great enough or cool looking enough that anybody would want to replace a team member they already have. Not to mention, it's a water type in a game filled with water types. Maybe I'm missing the mark here, but this has to be one of the least popular Pokemon from this generation. And it's not of any fault of the Pokemon. I think it's just suffering from the fact that it's in Gen 3. Maybe if it came out in a worse roster, it would have shined more. Now, Generation 4 is interesting. A lot of the really good Pokemon in this game, and bad Pokemon, are evolutions from earlier Pokemon. It's a well-known fact that this generation primarily gave an additional dope stage of evolutions to previously one and two stage lines, and a lot of them make the list for the best. Miss Magius, Honchkro, one of my favorites of all time, but not of this generation, Electivire, Mamoswine, Dusk Noir, these Pokemon are awesome. Great designs, amazing stats, and they take older Pokemon that were cool but needed something and gave them that something. And that's not to say the only great Pokemon of this generation are the evolutions, because Pokemon like Vespaquin show otherwise. Not amazing stats, but signature moves to carry it and a really fun design, although it loses points for being so damn impossible to get in the game it comes from. Nobody ever liked doing honey trees let alone honey trees where three-fourths of the version of the Pokemon you can get are useless to you. But for the best and my favorite Pokemon of this generation, I'm going to make an exception to one of my rules of this video 
just because of how good this Pokemon is. Torterra. Turtwig is my favorite Pokemon of this generation, but Torterra is the best. With amazing stats that it already had, Torterra was for a long time my favorite, but not the best Pokemon of this generation. But I say that it is now because of what it just got in Scarlet and Violet. Torterra's biggest weakness was always how slow it is. It has the defense to back it up, but it could never be a sweeper. But then in the DLC, the Teal Mask, Torterra shows up again, and now it can learn Shell Smash. This move lowers the user's defense and special defense by one stage, which isn't a big deal for Torterra, but it increases attack, special attack, and speed by two stages. Suddenly, this bulky attacker became a sweeper. I am not joking when I say this one move takes Torterra from a pretty great Pokemon to the best one in Generation 4. But this generation isn't without its low points, and going back to those evolutions I mentioned earlier, not all of them were great. A perfect example of this being Licky Licky. This is one of the worst Pokemon of all time because somebody looked at Lickitung and said, hey, what if we add more of them? which is something nobody needed to ask. But by far, in my opinion, the worst Pokemon of this generation is Ambipom. It has some pretty decent stats too. It's a good Pokemon to use, but it looks like a nightmare. Somebody said, what if we gave Apom a somewhat low stats monkey with a hand tail and gave him two hands? That's a fun idea. Why did you make him go from a cute monkey to this nightmare creature? Who thinks this is a good design? This is a huge miss here, and because of the missed opportunity and bad design on good stats, I've got to give the worst title to Ambipom. And finally for today's video, Generation 5, the last 2D Pokemon game, and some of the favorite Pokemon games of the people I talk to. Black and White is always up there in rankings, for good reason. Because of the soft reboot that Pokemon was experiencing, this is one of the biggest rosters we've gotten since Gen 1. And because of that, there are a lot of really great Pokemon, and really terrible ones. But there are plenty of standouts, and some of my favorites. Pokemon like Stoutland even show us that a basic Route 1 mammal Pokemon can be really, really good. Gen 5 also has some of my favorite bug type lines with Leveny and Scolipede. Great Pokemon with great stats and awesome designs. Both of the fossil types in this generation are peak as well. Archaeops is a really strong Pokemon with Defeatus, so it feels like a fun gamble to use, and Caracosta almost got best Pokemon of the generation. Great Pokemon, great typing, awesome that it's another slow turtle that benefits from Cell Smash. It would have been perfect, but it's a cop and a cab. So my favorite one of this generation has to go to Reuniclus. It's a great three stage psychic Pokemon with awesome stats and an adorable design. But there's one more Pokemon, another one of my favorites, that is the best of this generation, and that's Crocodile. Ground Dark is a great typing, and it's got amazing stats, and it's got a fun design as this evil crocodile. But if that wasn't all, it's got the ability Moxie making it one of the best sweepers of this generation. Every time it defeats a Pokemon, its attack stat goes up by one stage. One of the best abilities in the entire franchise. So it's just so good. But like I said, when adding this many Pokemon to a game, you also add a lot of stinkers. Swoobat, Conkledur, and Gothitelle, in my opinion, are all in the same category of decent stats on Pokemon with a terrible design. Look at these guys. At least Swoobat is cute and kind of charming, but none of these guys look great and they don't feel great to play. Throw makes the list for being sock but worse. I don't know why we needed fighting type Bert and Ernie, but if you're going to add it, at least make them both good. Maractus is a weird one because it's a great concept, great design, and decent typing, but they made it almost impossible to get and gave it no great stats to make you want to get it. So nobody uses this thing. But by far the worst Pokemon of this generation has to be a Lomomola. If not just for the fact that somebody looked at Love Disk and said, what if we made Love Disk again? But instead of making it an evolution or making it better, we just made another Love Disk. It baffles my mind they didn't just make a Lomomola good and make it an evolution to Love Disk. They wanted to make this specific Pokemon to replace the role of Love Disk and then just leave it at that. All right, we've talked about Pokemon for long enough. I, I wanted videos on this channel to be so much short and immediately the first one I'm putting out is like 15 plus minutes. So good job, Riley. But the next video will be covering the 3D games and then also awarding the best and worst Pokemon overall. So make sure you stay tuned for that. In the meantime, it's much older and a different style, but if you want to look towards the future of Pokemon, the last video I released on this channel is actually my analysis on the Pokemon Legends ZA trailer, which you can watch right here. But until next time, this has been Ride Toost. Of all the channels on YouTube, it's the second one. Until next time, as always, stay toasty, Slices.